From June through October 1966, pogroms in the North killed an estimated 80,000 to 100,000 Igbo, half of them children, and caused more than a million to two million to flee to the eastern region. 29 September 1966 was considered the worst day because of massacres. It was called Black Thursday. The pogroms witnessed in Makode Nigerian late September 1966 were foreshadowed by months of intensive anti Igbo and anti Eastern conversations among Thief, Doma, Hausa, and other Northerners resident in Makode, and fitting a pattern replicated in city after city. The massacres were led by the Nigerian army before, during, and after the slaughter. Colonel Gowon could be heard over the radio issuing guarantees of safety to all Easterners, all citizens of Nigeria, but the intent of the soldiers, the only power that counts in Nigeria now or then, was painfully clear. The program created a difficult situation in Eastern Nigeria due to the deluge of refugees. Extensive negotiations took place between Ujuku, representing Eastern Nigeria, and Gangwon, representing the Nigerian Federal Military Government. In the Aburi Accord, finally signed at Aburi, Ghana, the parties agreed that a loser Nigeria Federation would be implemented. Gangwon delayed announcement of the agreement and eventually reneged. On 27 May 1967, Gowon proclaimed the division of Nigeria into 12 states. This decree carved the eastern region in three parts, southeastern state, river state, and east central state. Now the Igbos concentrated in the east central state would lose control over most of the petroleum located in the other two areas. On 30th May 1967, Ujuku declared independence of the Republic of Biafra. The federal military government immediately placed an embargo on all shipping to all from Biafra, but not on oil tankers. Biafra quickly moved to collect oil royalties from oil companies doing business within its borders. When Shell BP acquiesced to this request at the end of June, the federal government extended its blockade to include oil. The blockade, which most foreign actors accepted, played a decisive role in putting Biafra at a disadvantage from the beginning of the war. Although the very young nation had a chronic shortage of weapons to go to war, was determined to defend itself, although there was much sympathy in Europe and elsewhere. Only five countries, Tanzania, Gabon, Côte d'Ivoire, Zambia and Haiti, officially recognized the new republic. Britain supplied amounts of heavy weapons and ammunition to the Nigerian side because of its desire to preserve the country it had created. The Biafran side received arms and ammunition from France, even though the French government denied sponsoring Biafra. An article in Paris, March of 20, November 1968, claimed that French arms were reaching Biafra through neighboring countries such as Gabon. The heavy supply of weapons by Britain was the biggest factor in determining the outcome of the war. Several peace accords were held, with the most notable one held at Abori, Ghana, the Abori Accord. There were different accounts of what took place in Abori. Ujuku accused the federal government of going back on their promises while the federal government accused Ujuku of distortion and half-truths. 
Ojuku gained agreement to a confederation for Nigeria, rather a federation. He was warned by his advisors that this reflected the failure of government to understand the difference and that being the case, predicted that it would be reneged upon. When this happened, Ojuku regarded it as both a failure by government to keep to the spirit of the Aburia Agreement and lack of integrity on the side of the Nigerian military government in the negotiations toward a united Nigeria. Gowon's advisors, to the contrary, felt that he had enacted as much as was political feasible in fulfillment of the spirit of Abori. The eastern region was very ill-equipped for war. Outmanned and outgunned by the Nigerians, their advantages included fighting in their homeland, support of most Easterners, determination, and use of limited resources. The UK, which still maintained the highest level of influence over Nigeria's highly valued oil industry through Shell BP, and the Soviet Union supported the Nigerian government, especially by military supplies. The Nigerian army in 1967 was completely unready for war. The Nigerian army had no training or experience of war on the operational level. Still, being primarily an internal security force, most Nigerian officers were more concerned with their social lives than military training, spending a disproportionate amount of their time on partying, drinking, hunting, and playing games. Social status in the army was extremely important, and officers devoted an excessive amount of time to ensure their uniforms were always immaculate, while there was a co competition to own the most expensive automobiles and homes. The killings and purges perpetrated during the two coups of 1966 had killed most of the Sandhurst graduates as by July 1966 all of the officers holding the rank above Cornell had been either killed or discharged while only five officers holding the rank of Lieutenant Cornell were still alive and on duty. Almost all of the junior officers had received their commissions after 1960 and most were heavily dependent and more experienced NCOs to provide the necessary leadership. The same problems that affected the Federal Army also affected the Biafra Army. Even, even more whose of officer corps were based around former federal Igbo officers. The shortage of experienced officers was a major problem for the Biafran army, made worse by a climate of paranoia and suspicion within Biafra as Ujuku believed that other former federal officers were plotting against him. Shortly after extending its blockade to include oil, the Nigerian government launched a police action to retake this secessionist territory. The war began on the early hours of 6 July 1967 when Nigerian federal troops advanced in two columns into Biafra. The Biafra strategy has succeeded. The federal government has started the war and the East was defending itself. The Nigerian army offensive was through the north of Biafra, led by Colonel Mohamed Shua, and the local military units were formed as the 1st Infantry Division. The division was led mostly by Northern officers. After facing unexpectedly fierce resistance and high casualties, the right-hand Nigerian column advanced on the town of Isuka which fell on 14th July, while the left-hand column made for Gakem, which was captured on 12th July. From 1968 onward, 
the war fell into a form of stalemate, with Nigerian forces unable to make significant advances into the remaining areas under Biafra control due to stiff resistance and major defeats in Abagana, Arochiko, Nguta, Umwehia, Operation OAU, One Ikot, Ekpene, But another Nigerian offensive from April to June 1968 began to close the ring around the Biafrans with further advances on the two northern fronts and the capture of Kodakot on 19 May 1968. The blockade of the surrounded Biafrans led to a humanitarian disaster when it emerged that there was widespread civilian hunger and starvation in the besieged Igbo areas. The Biafran government reported that Nigeria was using hunger and genocide to win the war and sought aid from the outside world. Private groups in the U.S., led by Senator Ted Kennedy, responded. No one was ever held responsible for these killings. In September 1968, Federal Army planned what Gaumont described as the final offensive. Initially, the final offensive was neutralized by Biafran troops. By the end of the year, after several Nigerian troops were routed in Biafra ambushes. In the later stages, a certain federal military government offensive managed to break through. However, in 1969, the Biafrans launched several offensives against the Nigerians in their attempts to keep the Nigerians off balance, starting in March when the 40th Division of the Biafran Army recaptured the Wiri and moved towards Port Harcourt. But we are halted just north of the city. In May 1969, Biafra commandos recaptured oil wells in Kuala. In July 1969, Biafra forces launched a major land offensive supported by foreign mercenary pilots continuing to fly in food, medical supplies, and weapons. Most notable of these mercenaries was Swedish Count Carl Gustav von Rosin, who led air attacks with five Marmor MF-19, Minicon, small piston engine, aircraft, armed with rocket pods and machine guns. His Biafran Air Force consisted of three Swedes, von Rosin, Gunnar Holland, and Martins Lang. The other two pilots were Biafrans, Ulimure Bruce and Augusto Sokwe. From 22nd May to 8 July 1969, Voirossi small force attacked Nigerian military airfields in Kodakot, Enugu, Bini City, and Ugele, destroying or damaging a number of Nigerian Air Force jets used to attack relief flights, including a few MIG 70s and three of Nigeria 6 Illusion 1128 bombers that were used to bomb Biafran villages and farms on a daily basis. Although the Biafran Offensive of 1969 were a tactical success, the Nigerians soon recovered. The Biafran air attacks did disrupt the combat operations of the Nigerian Air Force, but only for a few months. In response to the Nigerian government, using foreigners to lay some advances, the Biafran government also began hiring foreign mercenaries to extend the war. Only German born Rolf Stenner, a lieutenant colonel with the Fort Commandos, and Major Taffy Williams, a Westman, who remained from the duration, Nigeria deployed foreign aircraft in the form of Soviet MIG-17 and 1128 bombers.
while Biafra was at a glance royalty, in that they had immense reserves of Nigeria's oil under their control. The reality was very much an opposite of this, due to the fact that they were technically separatists. The international community more or less has its hands tied in regards to officially supplying them with goods. On the other hand, despite being a majority group that was carrying out a genocide, the federal forces were nonetheless still in Nigeria. As a result, they were more than able to spend the vast resources afforded to them on the international market. Additionally, neighboring nations and global powers were hesitant to involve themselves with the conflict, with nations like the USSR being all too aware of the political ramifications of choosing sides in the separatist conflict. Compounding the issue of international aid was that Nigeria had carried out an overnight change of currency in late 1968, rendering worthless the millions of Nigeria pounds that the Biafrans had in their treasury. This dramatically reduced their ability to purchase much needed medical supplies and food. In response to this, Biafra produced its first of two series of banknotes, the designs of which look strictly different from anything else in Africa at the, at the time. The lot work is extensive, while the, the denominations are very fluid, while the notes themselves may only use two to three head tones, colors each. The end result is that the symbol of Biafra, a bright yellow half sun, stands out even more, while the first series only produced a five shillings and one pound note. The second series, released sometimes in 1969, fleshed out the rest, adding ten shillings note as well as five pounds and ten pounds notes. In an attempt to quell the civil unrest that had been caused by both the programs themselves and ensuring influx of refugees, Nigeria split into 12 states, which the eastern region of Nigeria being divided into three separate states. The issue that arose was that the division of these states meant that the Igbo would lose control of those vast oil reserves they were sitting on. As a result, on May 30, 1967, the military governor of the Eastern Region, Colonel Dumegu Juku, declared independence from Nigeria, establishing the Republic of Biafra overnight. A mere six weeks later, two columns of troops under the federal government of Nigeria marched into Biafra, and the war commenced. The reasoning behind Biafra's independence was rather sound, following years of persecution which had culminated in the 1960 pogroms that resulted in the death of upwards of 100,000 people. The Igbo people had been steadily forced east. The Igbo were a minority ethnic group who were predominantly Christian in a majority Muslim nation. At the time, they were viewed as the educated and intellectual elite of Nigeria, with many Igbo people occupying roles as professors and, more importantly, officers in the military. On January 7, 1970, the 3rd Marine Commando Division under General Basanjo, supported by the 1st Infantry Division to the north and 2nd Infantry Division to the south, launched their final offensive. The Biafra S Division under Captain Azu Masoya was operating along the Port Harcourt, LLA Road. The division found itself cut off 
and dis disorganized due to the quick development by the Nigerian 70th Brigade under Major Tomoye. The Nigerians now began making their advance on Uwere. On the outskirts of Uwere, the Afrika Lieutenant Colonel Lambert Ehianochu's 63rd Brigade came under witching attack by Major Tom Oye's 17th Brigade, supported by one, two, three MM Soviet artillery. In less than a day of fighting, the 63rd Brigade became overwhelmed by the Nigerian bombardment and were forced to surrender. While the Nigerians were preoccupied with attacking the 63rd Brigade, the Biafran leadership made their final meeting in which President Juku announced his plans to go abroad in search of peace. Juku handed over the Biafran presidency to his vice president in the perfume and placed all remaining Biafran troops under the command of Major Joseph Akinze. On January 9th, Major Timothy Mwalugu escorted Juku to the Uli Airstrip where he boarded his private jet and fled to the Ivory Coast. Immediately after Juku's departure, President Efion called for a ceasefire to discuss the details of surrender. On January 12th, Philip Efion Joseph Achuze, Ogugo Kalo, and other Biafra officers made their way to Amichi and later over to broadcast their final surrender to the messenger. After the surrender of Biafra, some Igbos who had fled the conflict returned to their properties but were unable to claim them back from new occupants. This became law in the Abandoned Properties Act 28 September 1979. It was purported that at the start of the Civil War, Igbos withdrew their funds from Nigeria banks and converted it to the Biafran currency. After the war, bank accounts owned by Biafrans were seized and the Nigerian panel resolved to give every Igbo person with an account only £20. Federal projects in Biafra were also greatly reduced compared to other parts of Nigeria. In an inter-society study, study, it was found that Nigerian security forces also extorted approximately $100 million per year from illegal roadblocks and other methods from Igbo land. A cultural subregion of Biafra in what is now southern Nigeria, causing greater mistrust of the Igbo citizenry towards the Nigerian security forces. In Benin, the capital of Nigeria's Midwestern state. Hundreds of persons ran into the street shouting peace and freedom at news that Biafran leaders had called for ceasefire. Huge groups of dancing, shouting, people thronged the street corners, waving their arms and shaking hands with passers-by. General Gomon's victory message to the nation, 15th January 1970, broadcast from Lagos, 15th January 1970, from Nigeria House Press release, dated January 1970.